What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Week 9 is here, and we are halfway through the first SFL season. Hard to believe we're already here, and we are coming off a crushing, crushing defeat to our division rivals, the Savannah Spirits. 41-22, they now own the season series against us and own bragging rights. The subscribers of the Spirits now own bragging rights against the subscribers of our Terminators. But we are looking to rebound today against the 1-6 Montana Mountain Lions. Two new subscribers just joined the league today, and they are on this Mountain Lions squad. We're also going to take a look around the league here and take a look at all the team standings. We got to check out these two new subscriber players that joined the league and this Montana Mountain Lions roster. We got lots to get into today. Cue the intro, man. Let's get a look around the league and see how all the teams are doing. Make sure to check out for your team if you are a subscriber on that squad to get a look at your record. Also, if you guys would like to join the SFL series, if this is your first time watching, check the pinned comment down below. It's got all the credentials that I would need to add you in the next episode. Also, feel free to join the official SFL Discord. Link to that is in the description. We go over team stats, uh, standings, league leaders, stuff like that, upcoming schedules. It's a pretty good time. And guys, we are now up to 48 subscribers in the SFL. So thank you so much for that. But getting a look around the league here, of course, I just talked about them. The Savannah Spirits still undefeated. And we are almost halfway through the season. So shout out to them. They are 8-0 and they are looking like true, true contenders. The Boulder Rockies in the AFC South, they got two subscribers on that team. They are 7-1. So the only one loss team still here in the SFL. We got the Edmonton Coyotes. They're 6-2. No subscribers on that team. Same with the St. Petersburg Manatees. No subscribers on that team as well. And then also the Roswell Revolution are your 6-2 ball clubs. Then moving on here, we got the Sacramento Sharks in the AFC West. They're 5-2. And, and so are the Memphis Suns uh, in the AFC South. They are also 5-2 as well your three win ball clubs here we got the albany argonauts and superstar x factor running back bobby donuts to go along with subscriber qb craig ray they are five and three massachusetts smithies over in the afc east are five and three san jose industrials and the providence red raiders along with the jersey shore d's are all five and three as well and then your four and three ball clubs we got the grand rapids lightning and the rochester Rebels. Now moving on to your 500 ball clubs, four and four record here. We got the St. Louis Sentinels. We got the Topeka Silverbacks, the Akron Summits, which is also my main franchise team over on my other series. Go check that that one out as well. If you haven't, it's a pretty good time. The Salem Steelhawks, they got a ton of subscribers. They're four and four. And then the OKC Eels with quarterback Mason Buchanan and running back Grom Briner. Also in our division, they're four and four as well. And then we got the uh, Portland Destroyers. They got two subscribers also. They are four and four. Now your sub 500 ball clubs, which unfortunately is going to include us, the Tuscaloosa Terminators. We got the Juno Snow Isles at three and four. Dakota Pronghorns at three and five. Our team, Terminators at three and five, hopefully can make that four and five today. Get a little closer to 500. We got the Louisville Fighters as well. Two and five. We got the uh, Fort Worth Rough Riders, uh, Portland Lobsters at two and six. North Carolina Flyers at two and six. They're in our division too, so at least we're not the worst team in our division. And then your one and six ball clubs. So no team winless. That's good to see. We got the Kissimmee Crocs, and they got Patrick Mahomes. Like, how are the Crocs one and six, and you got Patrick Mahomes? I have no idea. Uh, we got the Toronto Thunderbirds. It pains me to say it, being my former team uh, last year. They are one and six. Milwaukee Motors one and six, and the Montana Mountain Lions, who we play today. Technically speaking, the worst team. Well, we got the Las Vegas Jacks, who are uh, not showing a record. They must be one and six as well. But we take on the Mountain Lions today. Hopefully, we can beat them. And let's go check out their roster and the two new subscribers added to their team and the league today. Montana Mountain Lions over in the AFC West. They got Brock Purdy, Mr. Ah! Irrelevant, as their quarterback. Now up to superstar. So got to watch him today. 
Running back group, they got J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, and Chase Edmonds, so nothing really too crazy there. John Lovett is the fullback. And Chris Godwin, who just got hurt in real life, gone for the whole season. That sucks for Baker Mayfield and the Bucks. He's their number one wide receiver, but the man of the hour is a new subscriber here, Christian Bangle. So shout out at Bangles fan down there in the comments for making both of the entries that you're going to see today. But Christian is 6'6", 210 out of the Ohio State University, my home state, might I add, requested to be the white version of Tyreek Hill. And since there's no white guys with dreads in this game, stat-wise, though, he is the white version of the Cheetah and does play on a team that has a Puma, so, you know, as their mascot logo. So there's something there. But 98 speed, 94 acceleration, and 94 deep route. We know our DBs and our secondary has kind of struggled today. So if we let Christian Bangle get into the second level and behind our DBs, it could spell disaster for us today. And the second subscriber to join this team is Gavin Goat. So we talking about cheetahs, mountain lions, goats, just animals all over the place. But a 6'8 tight end, 220 out of Oregon. He is a vertical threat archetype. And this guy can catch passes, man. 92 speed with 88 catching. 92 spectacular catch. Decent in the short to medium range, but I mean, he might as well be a slot receiver, right? With these stats, 90 deep route. Uh, he's going to be a pass catching threat. So got to watch out for our two subscribers. Tucker Craft also here. I love him in Green Bay, by the way. Speaking of Green Bay, Jordan Morgan, rookie uh, left tackle out of Arizona, is on the offensive line. Kenyon Green is the left guard. Tyler Linderbaum, pretty good uh, anchor there on the offensive line at the center position. Nate Davis, right guard, and also Jason Peters, 20 years in the league, 42 years old, still starting for a squad. That is pretty impressive. Rashawn Gary, more Packers, so just Packers everywhere, I guess, on this team. Rashawn Gary is here at left end. He could be a problem. Daniil Hunter, uh, so two superstars on the defensive line. I already know that I'm going to go blitz counter today. And Deron Payne, a very good defensive line. Linebackers, they got Aziz Ojolari. They got uh, Dre Greenlaw, so good middle linebacker. And uh, wait a minute. No, Dre, Dre Greenlaw's the right. Oh, Devin Lloyd. Okay, so still a good middle linebacker. And corners, they got Jonathan Jones, Benjamin St. Juice, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Kind of a little scared of their defense. Quandre Diggs is a good safety. Jaquan Brisker, a really good safety. Evan McPherson kicking the ball and Cameron Johnston putting the ball. I'm not sure how this team's one and six. They look to have a pretty decent roster. Puma Field in Montana will be host to today's game. Not sponsored by Puma, but maybe it's a, you know, fun little make-believe storyline, if you will. And got to show you guys this uh, Mountain Lions team, their, their uniforms, as I always do. This is a Monday night primetime game as well, by the way. But this is the home jerseys that the Mountain Lions will be rocking today. We got uh, their away jerseys, the white. I do like the blue and uh, kind of tan that I made there. And ooh, way hold on. The Nocturnals, though. The Nocturnals. Look at those. Dude, go download these teams in the Download Center. I made all of them. And look at the Nocturnals. I'm not going to rock these today, but that is fire. I mean, or should I? No, I try. I want to stick with the basic homes, but those I, I like those. The claw marks down there, that is that is fire, man. That is absolutely fire. But if you guys are fired up for this SFL series and you're loving this content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, help me get to 2,000 subscribers, join the channel memberships if you are so inclined. And without further ado, let's get on down to Puma Field. And get ready for the game. There you get a look at Puma Field in Montana, Montana. It's uh, you have to put Montana. I, you know, I want to make it like Carolina Panthers. You know, Arizona Cardinals. I want to make some teams the state, but you have to put a city in there, or else it would show up as the Helena uh, Mountain Lions, capital of Montana, if you didn't know. But there's Andy Reid. So this team used to be the Chiefs, and Brock Purdy playing the Chiefs. Uh, you know, Super Bowl matchup kind of thing going on there. And boy, do we really need this victory today. We uh, want to get closer to 500. Last week was a struggle, but that was against the best team in the SFL. So hopefully that was just an anomaly. And hopefully we can uh, tame 
these mountain lions here today. And Brock Purdy, 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns, 10 picks. Not crazy, but kind of like what he's doing a little bit in real life. I mean, he's not really having the best of seasons. I know the Niners are injured, but yeah, he you know he's, he's not having the season he had last year. But they will start out in uh, the single back formation or the strong formation, rather. And it's going to be quickly wrapped up there by Silas Vaden. Defensive tackle limiting uh, J.K. Dobbins to a gain of six. And if memory serves, I feel like last week, subscriber Daniel Banks kind of ran all over us. So got to make sure we uh, keep this running attack in check. This time it's J.K. Dobbins. I guess it was Cam Akers last time. And subscriber Brandon Moore, number 31 there to get him. But it was good for a first down. Let's try man here for a little bit. Uh, Purdy coming out single back. Got J.K. Dobbins back there. And look at, uh, oh yeah, Jerry Hughes, I believe. And for some reason, like uh, the AI, I, I went to go edit another team. So you have to retire your team and go to them. And then whenever you do that, the AI just makes all kinds of crazy moves. They traded Pat Fryermuth, our backup tight end. So we got a couple new faces here. I believe that uh, Jerry Hughes was one of them. And, oh, nice defense there. Wow. That was good defense by Xavier Woods. And that will bring up a third and long. And we get him off the field here. We've had trouble on third down this season. We're going to guess pass in this situation and uh, see where Purdy wants to go. I think he's rolling out. He is. No. And we can't stop. Oh, my God. Old ass Jerry Hughes. I knew he was. I knew that he was going to escape the pocket. So I used her up on Hughes there. And somehow Brock Purdy had the speed. I mean, not saying that Brock Purdy is slow or anything, you know, but he shouldn't be making 13 yard runs on third down. That's the type of stuff there that is just uh, inexcusable. We cannot have that happen. It's going to be J.K. Dobbins, and we couldn't get him there with Austin Kringle. He broke a tackle, but luckily, Jax Vaden was there to do the cleanup work for only a gain of one. We'll go man again here. We're going to press up as well. Ball's on the 43, so it is into our territory. And I'll tell you what, if that I believe that's Jerry Hughes. If that is Jerry Hughes, he's making all kinds of tackles again in a third and long as well. So can we just not do what we did last time that's that's really all i'm asking you know we'll guess pass again we'll shade inside i'm gonna actually just yeah you her up on jerry hughes kind of have him patrol the middle of the field not gonna matter that is caught by christian bangle the new subscriber wide receiver and our third down woes continue teams like they they probably would want to get in third and 15 because it just seems like every freaking team converts a third and long no matter the situation, gotta find a way to stop that. That's unfortunate, man. We had two really solid opportunities to get the mountain lines off the field on third and longs, and we just couldn't do it. There goes J.K. Dobbins, gonna be stopped there by Amari Taylor. He's at five for 21. And the mountain lines do got this thing to the five yard line. So dangerous, dangerous territory here. I mean, it's pretty much a lock for teams when they get us. Uh, you know, get into uh, our own five-yard line. Seems like they always, always score a touchdown. Just like they always, always pick up third downs. Oh, Jax. Mm, my God, man. I had a free shot at Purdy with Jax Vaden, and I just kind of whiffed it there. Uh, that's going to be Chris Godwin catching it for a touchdown. Mountain Lions get on the board first, and that could have been a really good defensive drive, except for the fact that it wasn't. And we got to find a way to stop teams on these third and longs, man. It's just inic freaking excusable. Here comes Drew Thompson. A lot of yards and, uh, you know, not that many picks either. But the problem is, yeah, I mean, he's got two to one touchdown interception ratio. But the problem is we just haven't had really a fully complete game in quite a while. I mean, maybe uh, I feel like that game against the Eels, Oklahoma City Eels might have been. Our last really, really complete uh, game. But we're going to start things out here with J.J. Huntington, our new subscriber running back. If we can get a few blocks, but apparently that's too much to ask for as Dre Greenlaw is there to drop us for a loss of three. Really still waiting for that, uh, that running game to really come alive. I mean, it was okay, I guess, last week, but nothing crazy. And now we find ourselves in a second and 13. 
This could be uh, David Njoku territory. I should have let that route get a little bit more open because I feel like David had some space. That's going to make it third and seven. But Joku had a great game last week, though. So, I mean, he may be our big focal point again today. Let's have J.J. Huntington block, and then maybe we can hit uh, Ty Huntington, our, our other receiver, who also had a big game. And it's going to be D-Hop slides, and they say fourth and inches. I didn't even necessarily mean to slide, if I'm being totally honest. But, I mean, there's no way that we're not going to check out QB sneak here. And there it is. There's that big hole up the middle. Uh, I know if it was anything besides fourth and inches, I wouldn't do it. But fourth and inches QB sneak, it is almost guaranteed in this game. We'll go RPO here on this first and 10. Hopefully JJ Huntington. I didn't like it. So we're going to test the edge with the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting, <laughs> we got three brothers on this team and they're all white uh -huh. now, by the way, they were black last week. And then I was told they're supposed to be white. So they just got a whatever. I don't know. They changed pigments, but I got him. We got JJ Huntington, we got Ty Huntington, and then we got TJ Huntington, who is our linebacker. So I got a JJ's the running back, Ty's the receiver, and then TJ is the linebacker. So I got to make sure I don't mix those names up. But let's see if JJ can pick up this second and two. He is not, because I could not avoid a block. That'll make it third and one. Throw a little double team here and just trust Huntington to pick up one hard fought yard, which he's, my God, dude, he's not going to be able to. Wow. See, I told you it's this defensive line, man. It's this defensive line. They got Rashawn Gary. They got Daniil Hunter. They got Deron Payne. It's, uh, there's just problems everywhere. And you know what? I have to, I have to go screen here. I'm not putting the ball back to the mountain lions. We got to answer them. Looking like their offense is going to come pretty easy. So we got to make sure that uh, we're putting up points in this one. And that time, J.J. Huntington going to get it with ease. So if nothing else, two fourth down conversions on this drive. We got about a minute to go to the end of the first. Ball's on the 42, so into Mountain Lions territory. Let's have David Njoku block. And uh, we got some crossers on the field here. There's one of them. It is Huntington. That is Ty Huntington. He had a really good game last week. I mean, first game in the league as a subscriber, and he came to play. He balled out in that one. Very, very impressive to see. Also, I see D-Hop getting pressed, so maybe if that safety comes down, which uh, he didn't, but we do have a receiver open in the middle of the field. It's Huntington again. Huntington is a doe, and Drew Thompson to him is going to be a pretty fruitful connection, I believe. And we'll probably let this thing just go down to the first. We will. So 7 nothing. We are knocking. If anything, we are holding the ball for a long time, possessing the ball for a long time. So that's going to help out the... If our defense is not on the field, I feel like sometimes that is good. But let's finish off this drive with a touchdown, please. Try RPO here again. If Boyd doesn't get open, I'm not opposed to running it outside. But he did kind of get open. He's got a will... Man, he was he should have been stopped for no gain. And Tyler Boyd just kept fighting, kept pushing, and almost gets it into the end zone. Let's see if JJ Huntington can finish this thing off. I do like the uh the box that I'm seeing here. It's favorable to a run, so hopefully Huntington can power through and he will. Alright, good. So we do match scores here. JJ Huntington gonna get the touchdown and hopefully. I make this extra point. First of all, uh, there is a little bit of wind here in Montana. So let me focus in and drill this. That thing is right down the middle. Now let's see what our defense has in store here for drive number two for the mountain lions. Running back receiving yards leader is JJ Huntington. Now that will be a little bit skewed because he used to be Christian McCaffrey and uh, I just changed him over. But still, I saw Daniel Banks and uh, Graham Briner in there also. So that's good to see. And Purdy operating here on first down. What's he going to do? He is going to throw it out of bounds. We had Amari Taylor, subscriber corner in the vicinity. Nice start to the drive. We can't stop him on third and long. Can we hope to stop him on third and short? I mean, <laughs> a guy can hope. Uh, got to watch the running game, though. They got Chase Edmonds in the ball game now. So we'll see if Edmonds is the one to get it. Purdy sending a man in motion, and that is just a wide open Gavin Goat. Looking like the goat on that play. No idea how he got so open. Don't even want to check the replay because it's just going to raise my blood pressure. 
and our third down woes again continue. And that's the kind of stuff that just drives the defensive coordinator freaking nuts, man. You play great on uh, two downs, and then, oh, come on, please sack him. It's Jerry Hughes. So maybe the CPU was on to something when they traded Pat Fryermuth, because I feel like Hughes has been all over the field. I would have liked to see a uh, subscriber sack in that situation. First of all, oh, yo, that's that bad. Was, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I'm going to take them as I can get them. So good down and distance for us. Second and 13. It's going to be a run to J.K. Dobbins, and we are there to meet him again. Third and 13. Now, I mean, just come on. Come on, please, guys, please. We have got to figure this out. Please get him off of the field. That's all I'm asking. It's a screen, and I mean, God, that was... We stopped him, but man, that was too close for comfort. And maybe Andy Reid even goes for this. I mean, I'm not saying that he would. He's not, okay. Uh, we have seen some blocked kicks, or at least one, from James Bradbury. So maybe we can see it again. That would be awesome. Nope. I didn't get the animation. If you don't get the animation where they start sprinting, just back up because you're not going to block it. It's not worth running into the kicker. Evan McPherson drills it, but we have a chance to go up now with the touchdown. Hopefully we can capitalize. I'm going to streak Tyler Boyd and I'm going to have a JJ Huntington block for. Oh, nope. I shouldn't have thrown that. Yes, I should have. Just kidding. That was led beautifully. I'm not saying that was a great pass. But I did lead it in the only place that Tyler Boyd could catch it. Great, great conversion Redeemed for the Terminators. Team, yeah. See if we can get this running game going. It, it's been tough sledding. And I mean, if I could just get any sort of blocking, Greg Gaines going to get me down there. I mean, he like there was nobody. I never even had a shot. I never had a shot on that one. It was <laughs> it was doomed before it even started. And J.J. Huntington, I realized he has a touchdown. That's awesome. Aside from that, though, it's been a kind of a struggle. So second and 13, see what we can make happen here. David Njoku, he is going to pick up the first down. He's coming off his quite possibly the best game of his career, real life or simulated in Madden last week. And uh, looking like he's going to be picking up where he left off in this one here today. Could be the last play here before the two minute warning. We're coming out single back and going to be looking for this crossing play again. We have Huntington. Through that over Dre Greenlaw. He was right there in the vicinity, too. I mean, that could have easily been a pick if he would have jumped. But I guess Drew Thompson got just enough under that. And shout out Ty Huntington. His great, great performance is continuing. And we got a real chance here to score. It's a two-minute warning. We get the ball after halftime as well. So we're set up pretty nice. Just got to finish this drive off the way that uh, we should. Try Huntington on the inside zone. Give me some blockers. Huntington fighting forward for touchdown number two. So he's uh, kind of playing the same way that, that uh, McCaffrey played for us. You know, the yardage isn't always there. But we know McCaffrey was just fine in the end zone, like, with extreme regularity. And J.J. Huntington appears to be... Doing the same thing as well, and we do go up on the scoreboard, which is awesome. Uh, haven't always been able to say that here on the Terminator squad. And subscriber kicker Corey Booter going to boot it through. We find ourselves up 14-0, but Mountain Lions still got almost two minutes to engineer a uh, final half drive of their own. And it's going to be a kick return touchdown from McCall Hardman. It's annoying. That is annoying, but you know what? I'm trying to spin it, glass half full. That if we can score here, that might be a good thing because if we score, right? As I realize that's a big if. Nothing's ever guaranteed on this team, but if we do score, and you know, go into the locker room, come out double dip, we'll actually be able to be up by more than we would have initially. I know that's playing chess when you should be playing checkers. I get it. But uh, it's it's something. And we got a minute 47, all three timeouts. I mean, we our offense is looking pretty good. Got to make sure we play smart. But we do got a real chance to double dip if we can score here. We'll get things started here. Shotgun going to run uh, just a little mesh spot concept. And Njoku is going to be the target. Man, he's catching everything thrown his way. I really, really am impressed 
by uh, the performance of David Njoku. He's been playing like a man possessed for us, and I love to see it. Um, Huntington, tell you what we're going to do here. We're going to send Tyler Boyd on a drag, but Huntington, I don't really like it. Thompson, do you have some speed? You do not, and we're actually going to take a sack on that one, which about the last thing I wanted to happen. I thought we were going to have Huntington there for for a second, but it didn't end up working. And we also get out of bounds too, which stops the clock. So like, really got to pick it up here with Huntington on the screen. See if we can do it. We got heavy pressure coming in and Huntington going to bob and weave his way. Following blockers, picking up a first down. That was absolutely huge for us. 29 seconds. Haven't called a timeout yet. I realized it. That's okay. We got all three. So, you know, it's not... Uh, End of the world. Oh, Boyd had it and dropped it. That would have been a tough play for him to hang on to. He did have a chance. Just couldn't haul it in. Got a little TE attack action here. Single high safety again. So, uh, nah, not going to look that way. But look at Najoku, man. I mean, it is just not even fair what he's doing to teams. Five catches for 73 yards. But give Drew Thompson some credit because he's putting these balls on the money. I mean, delivering them with pinpoint accuracy. Uh, you know, doing everything that you want your starting quarterback to do. And with us being in field goal range, you know, I, I'm going to obviously play for the touchdown here. Got to watch that clock. Um, kicking a field goal, though, not actually the worst thing in the world. And they're actually going to say that's a catch by Huntington. Wow. Oh, my God. I don't know how he hauled that one in. It was a nice pass again by Huntington. Had to go low. Uh, pff, wow, I'm not even not even 100% sure that he did keep his feet down necessarily, but I'm not gonna argue with it. Hopkins getting pressed. I mean, it, this has got to be really an end zone shot or a field goal. Like that's pretty much our options right now, and it could be Najoku. Oh, nearly picked off. Wow. All right, I think that was the Lord telling me what I need to do here. Yeah, kick a field goal with Corey Booter. Hopefully I can drill it, go into the locker room tied. Which we should drill it with ease. Corey Booter, subscriber kicker right down the line. So we got ourselves a good one brewing here, 17-17. The most important thing, though, is we do get the ball after halftime and a chance to retake the lead on the scoreboard. Would really, really, really love for that to happen. And got to make sure that freaking McCole Hardman doesn't return another kick on us that's not even gonna be hardman that time so uh ooh, things getting a little dicey and we will go into halftime you look at some of the games around the league here always always love to see it uh i see the topeka silverbacks Ooh, and the savannah spirits lost to the fort worth rough riders i'm assuming that means the final topeka silverbacks won but the savannah spirits will no longer be undefeated also i see albany argonauts won and i'm trying to look and scan here as I'm talking, the OKC Eels one. But wow, the Spirits were dethroned. Not dethroned, I mean, they still, you know, sit atop the throne. But can't believe the Fort Worth Rough Riders were able to snap their eight-game winning streak. I mean, can we get a kick return touchdown? Like, is that too much to ask for? I mean, not even gonna be close to happening there with Patrick Peterson. I don't know why Jaden Taylor... He should be the one returning kicks for us. Number seven, our subscriber corner. For whatever reason, he was not the one there in the backfield at all. I'm going to try counter run. It just might be really tough. I mean, they got a stacked defensive line, so it uh, might be tough to run against them. Part of me wants to audible this. I'm not going to do it, though. I'm going to stick with the oh, run. Man. And yeah, I mean... You got Deron Payne, you got uh, Daniil Hunter, you got Rashawn Gary. I mean, you know, who who could? Who could, who could run against that line? Like, that's that's a stacked defensive line right there. And it's just, yeah, might be, might be tough sledding for old JJ today. He might get it on this one depending on uh, what Tyler Boyd does. I need a block. Boyd, eluding traffic, is going to get upended for a gain of five by Devin Lloyd. Third and five, can we pick this up? Coach is saying screen, it's worked a lot of times today, and that just might have to be the move. Not in four down territory here unless we get it like to inches though, so 
Really, really need to pick this up, boys. Can we do it? Huntington has room to run and the out, the speed to outrun the defender. I know you also saw the uh, Montana Strong there on the sideline. Really happy with uh, the stadium and really all the stadiums for that matter. And we're supposed to get D-Hop more involved. Don't really care if we do. I'm going to try to look his way, though, on this one. And D-Hop is actually open. He wants t more targets, more touches. He's uh, a little bit mad at us right now. So maybe uh, that catch and run can elevate him, get that confidence up a bit. We are moving pretty well on this drive, I will say, but uh, not quite in booter field goal range. So got to go ahead and pick up some more yards. I mean, Najoku, do they want to guard him? Do they want to guard him? Apparently not. Drew Thompson at 255 and Najoku, he's... Got to be up close to 100 if he's not there already. The shallow cross again. The coach keeps calling it. And maybe uh, Hopkins just gets open again. I think that he is. He going to be stopped on fourth and one. Um, Decision time. Decision time. Coach even says go for it too. Uh, let's look at the quarterback sneak. I don't really like doing it from from one yard out. I like doing it on inches, but let's at least look and see. I, uh, I think we can get this. If not, I'm going to be pissed, man. And I did Drew Thompson get that? I think he did. I think he did. He did. Oh, my God. That was way, way too close for comfort there. But you know what? It ended up working. So at the end of the day, that's all I care about. Can we actually get... I don't know if I like this outside run necessarily. We're going to try it. But uh, we actually got... Oh, yeah, we got Ramondre Stevenson now, too. He also came over on that Pat Fryer move trade. You see him there, number 32. I don't know what the heck we got in return for that, by the way. But <laughs> Ramondre Stevenson and Jerry Hughes, I believe, were... We're part of it. And second and nine, uh, really want to pick this up, guys. Maybe D-Hop gets open, or maybe we just dump it down to Huntington. Oh, Huntington couldn't get off his block. That's super annoying. That'll be third and nine. All right, guys, don't really want to settle for a field goal. If I have to, I have to. But a touchdown, I would just feel so much better about that. And I think Najoku. Oh, <laughs> Had a shot, but couldn't haul it in. Quandre Diggs was there in coverage. And a field goal is, it's okay. Uh, it's good. Corey Booter, hopefully I can drill this with him. That one should be good. I really, like, got to stop what I'm doing and concentrate on kicks because I'm not good on this uh, college football 25 type of kicking meter. Made that one, though, and we do go up by three. Now, what's our defense have in store here in the second half? That is, as always, the big question. See if we can maybe rattle Brock Purdy here. I'm going to use her up on Roquan Smith. We'll see what uh, J.K. Dobbins does there in the backfield. Ooh, it's <laughs> Jerry Hughes. Why is he even in? Hold on. Why is Jerry Hughes even in? We have Aiden Leslie and Austin Kringle, subscriber, left end and right end. I mean, there's Austin Kringle at right end. There's Aiden Leslie at right end. Is he just in on the rush packages? God, I sure hope not. Jax Vaden there. He is. Why? Why is... See, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, look, it's it's been okay today. But whenever I go, you know, retire my, my coach and go play as another team, Madden always does weird stuff. And, uh, I mean, like I said, it's it hasn't been the worst thing in the world in this game. But I do want my subscribers out there. So uh, I got to make that adjustment, you know, next game. Shelby Harris trying to get a little penetration with him. And it is going to be Tucker Craft, the backup tight end, after a gain of seven. I kind of want to go go blitz here and I'm going to be a little aggressive and I'm going to do it. I'm going to have Jax Vaden drop out in coverage though. Maybe that will help a bit and it's Dobbins. Oh my God. We had it. I just can't. I just can't ever have nice things on defense, man. Going to get a little aggressive here with the corner blitz, but I just feel like something's got to give. Got to watch the 
end around again, which it definitely is an end around. And Brandon Moore going to push Chris Godwin's out of bounds. But this is a good drive for the Mountain Lions, and they're moving with ease. You know, had a chance to stop him on third down, which is the story of this entire freaking series, I feel like. <laughs> so, so frustrating, man. We got a good defense, too. We got a good defense, and just seems like time and time again, we fall short. And that's going to be Gavin Goat picking up a gain of eight, making it second and two. End of the third quarter, we are up, albeit only by three. And our defense is going to have to come up and make a play. If nothing else, though, our offense is humming. Our offense is humming, so I do like that. And uh, But I just, you know, I always, always, I should say I never, never feel confident playing from behind. At least not in this series. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, sack, turnover, fumble, anything of the sort. I mean, that was good penetration by Roquan Smith, though. And we are dead last in takeaways, and we have zero today. Not a good stat line that you see on your screen. All right, Terminators, come on. Need you to do something. Send in a Gavin Go in motion. A lot of motion from Purdy in this, uh, in this Chiefs playbook, I noticed. And that is Christian Bangle. He's been an active chap today. I believe he has three or four catches and on third and three do we send pressure or play coverage pressure hasn't really worked pressure has not really worked i am though gonna audible into man and just have uh, oh that's a false start or it should be it is gonna be a false start on i believe the center i want to say uh tyler or kenyon green the uh left guard but that'll push him back a little bit which is Always good. Come on, Terminators, please. I'm used to turn up on TJ Edwards here. See what uh, Dobbins is going to do. It's a run, and we did stop him. It's fourth and one. Will Andy Reid go for it, or will he kick the field goal? He's probably going to go for it, I would imagine. We did make the stop. And he is going to kick the field goal. Okay. Got to watch the fake here. And James Bradbury has been known to block a kick or two. So if we get that, oh, we did get the animation. We did get the animation, but couldn't block it. That was our chance right there, man. Ooh, he was so, James Bradbury blocking kicks off the edge. That might be a cheat code, but uh, we did end up uh, stiffening up there a bit at the end on defense. 2020, the game is within our reach. Got to go down here, play smart football and pick up some points. And yeah, twist Jaden Taylor was back there returning kicks and not Amir Abdullah. But uh, we're going to start from the 26 and see what this offense can do as you get a look at the rushing stat leaders. J.J. Huntington in there, Daniel Banks in there, and also superstar X-Factor Bobby Donuts in there as well. Now, can J.J. Huntington pick up three yards? It's been a struggle today. I realize that we should probably double-team Daniil Hunter, I'm thinking. And Huntington, oh, man. Oh, he broke a tackle. Still going, but going the wrong way. Oh, man, dude. I see D-Hop up the seam. Safe, or, uh, corners playing outside coverage. But uh, probably just go to Najoku. And, I mean, how do you stop this guy? I love it. Seven catches for 110 yards. I was entertaining D-Hop there for a moment. I, I really was. But I just didn't really like what I saw there. And, like I said, I mean... At the end of the day, how do you argue with the production of David Njoku? He's been an absolute dog for us on this team, and we got a fresh set of downs. So maybe Hopkins will give him a shot. Eh, not really going to get too much, only a pickup of three, and I believe that that's Hopkins' second target of uh, the afternoon. Green pass, I don't hate that. Screen pass, I don't hate that. Coach is calling it as well. It uh, has worked out uh, to some degree of success today. And we'll see if J.J. Hunt... Why can't I throw it? Oh, J.J. Huntington got stopped up on his block, man. And I got to go into uh, my bag of tricks here. This crosser has worked a little bit today. We got Huntington as well. And, man, we got to pick this up, dude. We just absolutely have to. Come on, Huntington. He got it. With room to run, he's still going. Drew Thompson at 324. And the combination of Ty Huntington and David Njoku 
has just proven to be lethal today. Hopkins is on press, which I do like. Um, I need to see that safety come down, though, which he did not. So we're just going to go to Tyler Boyd making catch after catch after catch. And our receivers are getting good separation and running some good routes today. I will definitely say that. I mean, this shallow cross has worked a little bit with DeAndre Hopkins today. Coach is calling it as well. I don't feel super confident about this play call. Um, and we, I mean, can't go for this. So let's just go ahead and pick this up. Please, Hopkins wide open in the middle. And he has room to run too. Getting very close down at the one yard line. And I'm going to take as much of this time. Actually, I'm not. Uh, yeah, because... I wouldn't be surprised if we score, if Montana does as well. And I would like some time back on the clock to answer at least with a field goal. And Huntington going to get in for the third time. So this brother has almost as many touchdowns as he has rushing yards in this game. It's been tough. I mean, it's a good it's a good offense or defensive line. It's a good defensive line. So I'm not saying it's anything to do with Huntington, but he's fine in the end zone. I kind of feel bad for Drew Thompson because he has no touchdowns, but all those yards. So got to drill this extra point here. That's a little dicey, actually. Corey Booter, very accurate. And we do go up by seven, two and a half minutes roughly to go. I mean, even if the Mountain Lions score, which I'm just, let's just put this thing away, please. Let's just pick it. Jaden Taylor had a pick last episode. Let's just pick it and seal this thing. But worst case scenario, even if they score, there is going to be a lot of time for us, and they will start this drive from almost the 30 after a pretty good return by McCole Hardman. I mean, we're pretty much in guest pass mode for the rest of this contest. It's an underneath route to Christian Bangle, who has been active today. I think that's... I said that earlier. I'm having deja vu. I almost said an active young chap, which I know is what I said, uh, what I said last time. But we'll see if Purdy snaps this ball. He doesn't have to, but he actually will. It's Dobbins, and that's going to be the two-minute warning. So the Mountain Lions have all three timeouts. Time really not, even even if they did it, right? Even if they only had one or two timeouts, like time is not the biggest factor right now because uh, they got to – I mean, you know, there's plenty of time for them to march down here and get a touchdown. So Purdy, he's going to take off Roquan Smith there. At time, in a good position, and forcing Purdy to slide after a gain of three. All right, guys, it's sweaty palms time. Purdy is sending Gavin go in motion, as he has been doing quite often this game. And that's going to be Chris Godwin. Nice timeout. Montana forced to... Or, <laughs> yeah, it's a nice timeout. It is a nice timeout. I meant to say nice catch. Montana forced to, to call a timeout there. And Purdy going to come out shotgun spread formation with Chase Edmonds over there to his left. Gonna have Jerry Hughes just kind of play coverage here, and it's gonna be a check down to Edmonds. Amari Taylor is there to stop him. They're going to hurry up now, which I always hate. Never good at stopping the hurry up offense. Uh, time's ticking away though. Time is ticking away again. It's underneath to Chris Godwin, and the Mountain Lions are gonna call a timeout here. And we'll have Jax Vaden this time. Use her up on him. And again, just have him play a little coverage out here. Purdy going to find Gavin Goat, but he is going to get drilled backwards. Amari Taylor there. And now the Mountain Lions are actually out of timeouts. Yeah, nothing comes easy in this series. I'll, I'll tell you that much. 27-20, 39 seconds to go on the clock. And that's a nice job getting out of bounds there by McCall Hardman. We should probably shade outside. Got to think about uh, defending... The sidelines, the sidelines are kind of like an extra defender in this situation. Um, so we'll kind of see how that plays out. But a sack or something here would would pretty much, pretty much seal the deal. Oh, come on. We're not in good position. Thank you. ...there to stop Dobbins, and he fumbled it. And Roquan Smith picked it up. Please tell me that stands. Please tell me that stands. I'm not sure who got in there to make the play. But just please tell me it stands, man. We'll, we'll take a second look at it on replay. We might even see it here. It might have been Brandon Moore, the subscriber safety, and it looks like he might have 
not had his his uh, his knee down. First, I want to see if we get a booth review. Let, let's take a look at the replay first. I'm pretty sure that that was number 31, Brandon Moore. The, I mean, it would have been tough anyways because that clock was rolling. I see a Mark Taylor in there. Brandon Moore comes out, and I believe Brandon Moore was the one to strip it, but was his knee down, though? I don't know, man. It's going to be tough. Are we going to get a booth review? We are. That one's coming back, unfortunately. Booth reviews always come back. Under review. And that stops the clock for Montana as well. It's it's coming back. I already know it's coming back. And that yet. Oh, man. Heck of an effort there by Brandon Moore. After heck of an play, effort. But it is reverse. coming back, unfortunately. So what's Purdy going to do in this situation? What's he going to do? Come on, somebody get up and stop him. He scored with zeros on the clock. Purdy has dominated with his legs today. I will say that. And we had all the routes locked up. So <laughs> our only hope of avoiding overtime now is a blocked kick from James Bradbury. And we're not even going to get the animation. And this one is heading to overtime. Okay. Like I said, nothing comes easy in this series. Uh, it's 27s on the scoreboard. The Mountain Lions were able to tie it up with zeros on the clock. And all we had to do was get to Brock Purdy. And we were not able to do it. So what is going to happen here in overtime? I just hope that we get the ball first. That's all I can hope for. And we actually get to choose. Tails never fails. Except for when it does. And it just failed us there. So Mountain Lion's going to get the ball first. Got to tighten up on defense here. Does Brock Purdy have ice in the veins? That is the question. I mean, I feel like he probably does, right? Like he's a good quarterback. Never really seems to be too rattled back there in the pocket. Hopefully we can rattle him. I'm going to be usering up on Jax Vaden here, sending a little bit of pressure, and it's not going to get home because it never does. Trying to strip Gavin Goat there. He hauls it in for a nice gain of eight. We're going to get aggressive here, and we are going to send pressure. I don't know if that's the right call, but we're going to do it anyways. And uh, Brandon Moore, who, man, he got robbed, dude. He got robbed on that fumble. That much is for sure. He is there to make the tackle, but the Mountain Lions are marching down the field here with ease, it would appear, and uh, got to do something. It's going to be Chase Edmonds on the carry. Moore trying to strip it again. He's not going to be able to, and right now we are at risk of falling to three and six, which I am just so stumped by that. So stumped by that, man. We're going to go linebacker blitz here. Hopefully, Purdy doesn't audible this into a pass. Of course he did. Why wouldn't he? There is uh, Tucker Craft. He's going to score and put this thing away. Tough, man. That's tough. And it's it's tough for us to win a ball game right now. And I just, you know, I can't, can't figure it out. Uh, we had a chance to win this one. Our offense played great. Our defense just did not make any plays. And I don't really know what, what else more to do. Say we got a good team. We have a really good team. Great overall. It's been a tough start to this season. But three and six, I mean, we're not out of the playoffs yet. Luckily for us, our, our uh, division's terrible, with the exception of Savannah. But that one is crushing, man. Drew Thompson, 344. No picks, played great, 83% completion, but 88% completion for Brock Purdy. I mean, that's like, we got to stop some passes uh, and just no, I mean, three, five yards, three touchdowns on 13 attempts. We had no running game, no running game. I get that it was a good defensive line, but like that is borderline inexcusable uh, to have that kind of kind of rushing attack. Drew Thompson had four for four as well our receivers playing good though Najoku seven for 110 Huntington six for 115 love the play from Huntington Tyler Boyd played good also and uh JJ Huntington did pretty good in the receiving game Gavin Goat tight end was four for 85 and a touchdown and Christian Bangle four for 55 so at least nice to see our new subscribers uh getting involved here making some plays and the defense man it's 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 a tough time for the boys here Amari Taylor had six tackles. 
Jerry Hughes had four TFLs. Uh, Brandon Moore could have won the game for us, but it got overturned. Five total tackles for him. TJ Huntington, four total tackles. Jaden Taylor, three. Uh, Jax Vaden, two total tackles. But, like, where's the TFLs? Where's the sacks, man? Silas Vaden with one tackle. Like, I don't know. If it's the scheme, I don't think it is. I mean, we're, we're running a 4-3, which I feel like that's the scheme that we should be running with this team. So tough loss, but let's go check out the rest of the subscriber stats here in week nine. Nice to see the Topeka Silverbacks get back into the win column. They beat the Providence Red Raiders 27-21, led by an amazing game by their subscriber QB Kyrie Brooks. 316 and a touchdown. So a uh, great, great bounce back game. The Silverbacks were on kind of a skid. And he found his guy, Puka Nakua, a lot. Seven for 107. And the touchdown went to Josh Downs. So great game by Silverbacks Nation. This is the one that just shocks me, man. The Fort Worth Rough Riders and the Savannah Spirits, their first loss of the season. Caleb Hayes still played pretty good, as he tends to do week to week. 242, two touchdowns, and uh, also a pick, though. Uh, Daniel Banks, though, man, he did not get it going. Kind of like us, right? Must have been uh, our division. I don't know. But Daniel Banks went 11 for 26. Caleb Hayes added 15 yards on the ground himself as well. Receiving Elijah Moore went off. Okay, it's good to see for him. George Smith went 3 for 51. Dallas Bolton went 2 for 21. Daniel Banks, 2 for 16. Lots of subscribers on the Spirits team, as you guys know. DeAndre Smith went uh, 2 for 12 as well and defensively for the spirits see who got involved here trustin smith had seven tackles jackson prime had five tackles cam o'shea had a pass deflection and four tackles as well eli acro had four tackles and a tfl i believe that's all the stats so Nice job from the Dallas Rough Riders handing Savannah their first loss of the year. Las Vegas Jacks just traded for QB Chase Kaiser. He gets a big win against the Edmonton Coyotes and Deshaun Watson. Oh boy. But shout out Chase Kaiser, a perfect QB rating, 158.3. And he had 260 through the air to go along with three touchdowns. And he added 20 yards on the ground as well. And he really got... Tyreek Hill involved six for 118 and a touchdown. Also, Drake London, two touchdowns as well. So shout out Chase Kaiser and the Las Vegas Jacks. Akron Summits take a loss to the Sacramento Sharks, who are playing really good. And subscriber QB Dragon Zetron, 268, two touchdowns and a pick. So uh, not, a, not a bad stat line. Also added a touchdown on the ground as well. He went six for 21. And uh, he was getting rookie Brian Thomas Jr. involved heavy. He's going to be a guy, man. He is going to be a dog in the league. I'll tell you what. Another rookie, too, Xavier Leggett. But a tough loss for the Summits as they were not able to down the Sacramento Sharks. Older Rockies continue their winning streak. Toronto Thunderbirds continue their losing streak. Battle of the QBs here. Lucas Thomas went 225, a touchdown and a pick. And Jordan Baker went 150, a touchdown and a pick. And Lucas Thomas also added a touchdown on the ground as well. 10 for 34. Jordan Baker had 16 yards uh, rushing also. And a subscriber running back Austin Lucas had a very good game. 8 for 83. And uh, the Boulder Rockies and the Savannah Spirits now tied for the best record in the SFL. Albany Argonauts played great. We play them in a few weeks and they dispatched the St. Louis Sentinels. Another battle of the subscriber QBs. Craig Ray here, 249. No touchdowns and no picks, so this must mean I'm thinking this is a Bobby Donuts game. I really am. Ashton Saber went 235, two touchdowns and a pick. And uh, yeah, I would sure say so. Bobby Donuts, 82 yards and four touchdowns. That's what happens, boys and girls, when you're a superstar X-Factor. So if you would like to become a superstar or a superstar X-Factor, check out the channel membership. It's only a couple bucks a month. You could be like Bobby Donuts here, just living in the end zone. Also, Craig Ray. So a lot of subscriber QBs are rushing for touchdowns. Maybe we need to follow that trend. Um, he had 21 and a touchdown. Ashton Saber had 21. And a nice win here for Albany. And again, we will see them in just a few short weeks. Okay, see, Eels beat the Flyers. So again, we're still not the worst team in our division. We're, uh, we're third. <laughs> 
Mason Buchanan went 205 for two touchdowns, and Alex Thompson, brother of R, Drew Thompson. So both the Thompsons having a tough time in uh, this SFL series, but he went 242, a touchdown and a pick. And uh, Grom Briner went 13 for 34. He usually does his damage in the receiving game, though, so we'll check on that here in a second. Buchanan went uh, 2 for 12, and no rushing stats for... Uh, oh, actually, yeah, Alex Thompson went 4 for 18. And, uh, yeah, Grom Briner, this dude is a wide receiver in a running back's body, man. 8 for 73 and a touchdown as the Eels are able to fly away with the victory against North Carolina. Portland Destroyers beat the Jersey Shore D's, and I feel like ever since we beat the D's a few weeks ago, they're just on a losing streak. And Dominic Young, the 38-year-old Tom Brady build quarterback, played like Tom. 311, three touchdowns, a 140.7 quarterback rating. Lamar Jackson did not play well in this one. And uh, Dominic Young, I mean, all these subscribers rushing for touchdowns. We gotta jump on the bandwagon. Also, Alexander Kleblek, the receiver, had two for 12, and Kleblek had a pretty good game. Keenan Allen dominated. Wow. Uh, but Kleblek, six for 76, so pretty good stat line for him. And we also have a subscriber cornerback on the Ds of Aiden Grau. He had six tackles for and also one pass deflection, but a nice convincing win by the Portland Destroyers. And I completely forgot Jesse Moore. I'm sorry, brother. Trying to keep track of all these subscribers is a tough, tough task. But uh, Moore had two for 14, so, you know, a big game for him, and I feel like the Ds are competitive, but the Destroyers defense uh, pretty much destroyed them on that one. Grand Rapids Lightning playing good football. They beat the Dakota Pronghorns 34-28, to and Lucas Spicer had a great game, 296, three touchdowns. J.J. McCarthy had a pretty good game in his own right as well. And I was about to say, man, if Lucas Spicer rushed for a touchdown, I'm just running with Drew Thompson next game every, every play, like... But Spicer was, did a good job, 5 for 30, and then checking out subscriber wide receiver Floyd Butler, 6 for 60 and 2 touchdowns. So I'm loving these subscriber connections between quarterbacks and wide receivers and running backs. It's a thing of beauty and a nice win here by the Grand Rapids Lightning. Salem Steelhawks, a convincing win too over the Juno Snow Owls as they get to back to above 500 and Cameron Moore played great, 236, 3 touchdowns. A very good quarterback rating at 140.1. And shout out Ian Tyler CEO. We were talking in the SFL Discord. If you're not in the Discord, you should be. Join it. But uh, my guy Cameron Moore was saying Ian's breakout game is coming. There you go. Right there. 12 for 105. A touchdown and averaged 8.8 .8 yards on the ground. Cameron Moore also scrambled uh, 6 for 16 as well. And the tight end Joe Uno. I don't know why they're not targeting him too much. He had one for 14, but at the end of the day, like, you know, if you get a win, you get a win. That's all you can really ask for. And Daniel THG, subscriber corner, had a good game with seven tackles. And not Oreo had uh, two tackles and a TFL. So a nice, much-needed win, I would say, from the Salem Steelhawks. Rochester Rebels lose to the St. Petersburg Manatees. I just elevated their uh, subscriber wide receiver Tommy Pickle to wide receiver number one. And I'll say, even though they didn't get the win, it was a great game for Tommy. He went eight for 76 and a touchdown. But uh, unfortunately, it was not enough to uh, stop the Manatees. And of course, our game, don't want to talk about it. Just don't want to talk about it. We're going to bounce back next week. We play uh, subscriber Yeezy Fuentes and the San Jose Industrials. So hope to catch you guys next week, man. It should be a good one. And uh, as much as I want to see Yeezy Fuentes have a good game, we got to get a win. Like I would say this next game is our season. It is not over yet. It's teetering on being over and we got to just will ourselves to victory. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.